Hello beautiful creatures, welcome back to Of Crafts and Curios. It's in bulk in the Southern Hemisphere, which means spring is beginning to show herself and it is time to do my fifth altar doll in my Wheel of the Year series here on my channel. Bulk is a cross-quarter sabbat which sits between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. It is a time when life is beginning to wake up, a lot of animals are pregnant at this time and about to birth. One of the known uh, telltale signs of Imbolc is when sheep and cows uh, harvest their first milk. So today we're going to be celebrating life and creating a doll that uh, has some elements of telltale signs of Imbolc while also being just super cute and beautiful to sit on my altar this Imbolc. And although I am making a St. Bridget cross on screen right now, I will not be making a St. Bridget effigy for my Imbolc doll this year. I wanted to do something more personal and intention based, so maybe I'll make a St. Bridget doll next year. But for now, I'm just going to be doing St. Bridget crosses to tie the St. Bridget uh, mythology and deity into my Imbolc celebrations. The translation of Imbolc is beautiful, it means in the belly, and I think that is such a beautiful image to think about the dawning of spring, the beginning of life wakening up, and it also situates itself really beautifully in the Maiden Mother Crone trilogy that a lot of Wiccans base a lot of their practice around. So I will be doing a pregnant doll, just a forewarning. If you don't want to see doll nudity and doll bellies and all that stuff, it will be part of this video. And yeah, so to begin with, I'm taking a Howling Wolf doll. I'm leaving her, oh, a Claudine Wolf, some form of wolf doll. And I'm leaving her ears on for now, but I do end up taking them off. And then using my acetone based nail polish remover, I am going ahead and removing the factory paint. Then I will use my classic hot water technique to pull off the head, rip out the hair plugs, and go from there. Now to remove the hair plugs, I do use sharp ended scissors. You can use all sorts of things. Something that's gonna break the glue bonds to rip out the factory hair will do. So a screwdriver or pliers or even probably a needle. But once she's all clear, I did end up taking off her ears and I cut the back of her head to get out some really stubborn clumps of glue. So I sewed that back up. And now it's time to move on to sculpting the belly of my doll using Millie Part Super White. It is the best Millie Part I find. It's just less crumbly, easier to blend, and yeah, my preferred epoxy sculpt basically. So I'm just doing a basic tummy shape. It's really not more than that. It's just a simple domey shape and blending that down as best I can to form a smooth seam. I like to think of this time of year as a time of potential abundance. So I think a pregnant belly is the perfect uh, way to tie that into my altar doll. And it looks really cute. I think Monster High spines are really ridiculously curved, so it's really easy to do a belly on them. And then I did my best to color match with pastels. Uh, it's not the, it's a little bit darker, but it's, it'll, work for what I'm doing and I filled in the holes on her head with some more Millie Putt before beginning my face up. For my face up I'm really focusing on a sort of tired gentle expression because it is just the waking up of spring after the depth of sleep of Yule and midwinter. I want my doll to look tired, she's pregnant, she's been working, it's been a long winter so I want that heavy eyelid, soft gentle gaze and that's kind of the inspiration for my face up and the expression that I hopefully pull off on this doll. As always I am slow to build up the 
under shading and general shapes of my face up and then after layers and layers of Mr. Super Clear, I build up more and more detail with each layer, uh, bringing the face to life. And with some final beauty marks, she is going to be all done. I think her face up is so cute. She is so gentle and soft and tired and beautiful. So I'm really happy with the face up. And now it's time to move on to the hair. If I was doing a St. Bridget doll, I would do a beautiful red color, but I'm doing a soft cornmeal kind of color to uh, draw a sort of parallel to my Lunasar doll as these are the sabots that occur at the same time on the opposite sides of the world so I think her hair turned out beautiful I love the texture I love the style she looks so cute so moving on to clothing I have a lot of fabrics I could use but I'm so drawn to this like forest scene with the sun peeking through the like trees I think that is perfect it does have turkeys on it as well but I will make sure to cut around the turkeys because I love the kind of winter forest scenes that are on this fabric so I do think it's perfect to make a cute little dress out of so I am going to do a kind of short sleeve spring dress but I will make a cloak as well because it isn't warm enough yet to just be wearing your shoulders out here in New Zealand so just going across hand sewing this little baby together and she will have the cutest little forest scene uh, in bulk dress there ever was. For her cloak and hood, I am going to be using yellow. Uh, yellow is the color I think of when I think of in bulk, and it's kind of an inverse of my Lunasar doll, so I think it's a great way to tie those two together and bring a series continuation feeling for my series here on my YouTube channel. So here's my cute little outfit. The forest dress, oh my gosh, how adorable, with the sun peeking through that clearing, so perfect to symbolize in bulk. And then I use some twine to tie above the belly bump so that you can still see the belly bump and I added a under layer of mesh to create a longer sleeve which is its own removable piece so I can take it off if I wanted to have her shoulders out. As always my altar dolls have a symbol or accessory that they hold to symbolize the sabbat they stand for and I've been making bridger crosses to decorate my altar and I thought what better accessory for my in bulk doll than its own tiny little bridger cross. So I peeled down some corn husks that I've had drying over the winter and it's time to make the world's smallest bridger cross. Which is probably not true, it's really not small enough to be to scale, but none of the accessories my dolls hold are ever, so it's not a big deal. And here I'm just showing you how easy it is to actually make a Bridget Cross if you wanted to make one at home yourself. You don't have to use corn husk, you can use anything. Uh, I'm sure it would work with like fuzzy wires or really anything, cloth, whatever you wanted to use, as long as it was in strips and you could tie it around itself. So here I am just making that tiny Bridget cross. Mm -hmm. 
I trimmed down the edges and tied them off with pink little rubber bands and my tiny Bridget Cross was complete, bringing my doll to her completion. She is absolutely gorgeous. I love her expression and I'm so obsessed with the dress. That light breaking through the forest wall is so perfect for in bulk. And yeah, I really hope you guys think she's gorgeous too. I now will show you a bazillion glamour shots of this gorgeous doll and how happy I am with her. I did add some final detailing to her cloak, a little bit of lace around the edging and a little lace um, fixture to complete her cloak and I think she is gorgeous. I think she sits perfectly across the wheel from my Lunasar doll and she's going to look absolutely beautiful on my altar this in bulk. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave us a thumbs up, leave a comment below on what you're doing to celebrate your Sabbath wherever you are in the world. And as always, hit that subscribe button, follow us over on Instagram. And if you haven't already, you can check out the rest of my Sabbath series here on my channel. Look how beautiful they look together. And I'll see you so soon back here again with more crafts and more curios.